it's 5 30 in the morning and i i can't sleep i got up so i went for a run and uh meditating a bit in the morning praying just um trying to uh, keep my mind occupied with something um and then something came to my mind was um you know trying to preach better to the eucharist how can we preach about the eucharist better how can we bring people to understand and love the eucharist more to under, understand what is the eucharist how how it can transform our lives because the eucharist will transform your life um there's sometimes in in the in the media you hear about uh, a place called only fans now i've never actually gone into this website so i have no idea what goes on there i'm not going to sign up for something um but you hear about people that have made millions from this website and as you do um you know lust sells sex sells that's the simple truth of it and um this seems to be a very popular site but i always wondered you know people spending their time on a computer you know gratifying themselves looking at porn these people they're never going to actually meet these people these people are never going to actually physically be there with them to say i loved you you mean something to me all you mean to them is money <laughs> really um and it's 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 quite sad this phenomenon that we're our heart is chasing something or we're chasing this gratification we're chasing this satisfaction we're chasing something to make us f feel alive different and so forth and it's 2022 if that's what floats your boat if that's what you want to do who am i to police your life you're a free man a woman you can do what you like um I just want to offer an alternative, just an alternative. If, if, if you've been down that path and you've seen it all and you've done it all and it's never made you happy, that's the demographic I want to reach to. The demographic who are, are tired of everything that this world is offering you and you're lusting for something eternal that really will captivate your heart. The way I see the Eucharist, and, and maybe some great theologian will, will, will correct me on this, the way I see the Eucharist is God giving his heart to me. So God is literally feeding his heart to me. And I only ever understood this when I went to traditional Latin Mass, when I understood the theology behind this. So I'm not some militant traditionalist that wants us to go back to the past. I just found personally for me a spiritual nourishment there that helped me that was just my kind of just my my ordinary experience and and the more i read up about it the more i understood it and um it, it was just a profound experience I've, I've said it in other in other videos of of god literally feeding his heart to you literally giving you his heart and in order for that food in order for God's heart to transform your heart, to come into your heart, you, you have to strip away what your heart is lusting for in other things in your life. So you can't be looking at porn. You can't be gratifying yourself. You can't be living a life that is totally, you know, focused on things that will never give you happiness or love. Money, power, all of these things, fame and so forth. You know, I didn't want to set up this video for, you know, as a vain project. I just wanted to, you know, speak from the heart and to show people the beauty of the Eucharist, the transformative beauty of the Eucharist. It can really happen. Um, and I was glad to see Pope Francis has allowed the Fraternity of St. Peter to continue their mission of tradition, which is not easy. You know, traditional Catholicism you know, is not easy, but it's it's a beautiful pilgrimage. Well, I find it anyway. It's a very, very beautiful pilgrimage. And now as we're heading into um, Lent, Quaresima, the 40 days, um, maybe it's a time now, try to give your heart to the Eucharist. Try to give your, try to allow the heart that is coming to you in the Eucharist, the heart that God is trying to feed you, to come into your life. And that can only be done if your heart isn't divided. 
your heart has to be united with God in everything as much as you can. I mean, you, you have to want to unite your heart with God. It's not always going to be easy. You're going to have temptations. You're going to fall. That's life. That's our fallen state. You know, we fall. Things don't go always their way, you know. Um, but, you know, try to unite your heart to God. Uh, you know, try to, try to do that. Try and go in silence and unite your heart to God. Um, I, I, I always found this, you know, a, a very beautiful meditation. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's been a long pilgrimage for me. It's been a long discovery. Um, you have to go into the desert sometimes to really clean your heart out. You know, go, go like to a long lock dirk or something like that. Go to the desert uh, where there's nothing there except your, yourself and God. Um, on Mount Athos, the, the monks have a place called the desert. It's at the bottom of the peninsula and it's between, if you're going to the biggest monastery, Magister Lavera, and then you walk toward, along the bottom towards uh, Skita Agiana. The, between those two monasteries, there is the path up to Mount Athos. So it's, it's, it's a long walk and it's a long walk uh, up to, to the top of the mountain. And this is the desert that monks would go to, you know, where you're, you have nothing there. You have nothing. Uh, it, it's not the desert in the litter. It's not full of sand. It's lovely. It's lots of trees. It's very green. It's beautiful. The views over the Aegean Sea are just incredible. You know, it's you no know, wonder the monks love this place. But, you know, you have to strip away everything that is dividing your heart, that is bringing your heart, that is not allowing your heart to love. And en encounter yourself and just be at peace with yourself. It's, it's a very, very beautiful meditation. It's a very, very beautiful meditation. It's a beautiful place to go. There's a, there's a refuge at the top where you can sleep for the night in a bunk bed, um, a well where you can get water and have tea and light a fire. And uh, it's very, very peaceful. And, um, and that's really where I'm asking you people if, if, you know, you can do what you like. You can do what you like. I'm only asking if you, if you want an elite training program that is going to challenge you in your life. Try giving your heart to the Eucharist. And that means, you know, trying to focus on virtues that are going to help you do this. You know, uh, fasting, uh, chastity, uh, which are not, it's not a denial. You're not denying yourself everything. You, many people have already had their fill of all this junk in their life. This is about, okay, that hasn't helped me. That hasn't fulfilled me. Let me try another path. Let me try that that ascent of the mountain, um, that which is difficult. It's always going to be difficult, but it's very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I've, I've always found it. Um, I, I'm on my, the last couple of days, I've been reading The Bishop of the Abandoned Tabernacle by St. Manuel Gar uh, Gonzalez Garcia. Um, and I was just meditating here on, on the second look. Um, just read it out for you. The setting is a sad scene, the courtyard of the high priest. There inside, Jesus is submerged in a sea of ingratitude, cruelty, false accusations. Outside, there is Peter, his closest friend, the trusted man, the confidant of the persecuted Jesus, denying him once, twice, three times, even with an oath. What happened then? Jesus starts to run, holding back tears which were coming to his eyes. The prisoner inside, overlooking his own sufferings, directs his gaze towards the friend who was falling. The gaze filled. Let me just get the page. The gaze filled with memories. A gaze expressing hurt and a broken heart. A gaze inviting contrition, hope, and forgiveness. So, you know, the apostles struggled with all of this the early christians many of us struggle with all of this that's the spiritual battle it's a struggle sometimes um and uh you know you can definitely go off on a tangent and you can you know lose your head sometimes it happens to all of us you lose your head and you say and you, then you're thinking god what did i do what did i do you know it's just like how did i be how was i so blind that you can you know, you can destroy people, you can be hurtful to them, 
you, you know, really, we can be so mean sometimes, so cruel, so unchristian. You know, we can we can think we have all the virtue, and then we say, we wake up one morning and says, "Holy cow, I really do not have any of what I thought I had." Well, that's really when you have to go back and renew that commitment to give your heart to God in the Eucharist. Really, try this. Try it, please. Just understand, just imagine that this great God is giving you his heart. I mean, for, for a reason Christ came and gave us a devotion to the Sacred Heart. And we see this in St. Faustina, you know, the, the, the blood and water. The, you know, it's, God is so great. He gives you so much peace. So much peace. So I'm just cha challenging, challenging this world which has everything. You know, you can have everything. As, you know, you can, where's this word? You know, at a flick of a, at a flick of a switch, you turn on your phone and you can, you can be that only fan there enjoying yourself. You can. I mean, it's not like I want to give publicity to this, but you know, it's it's over the it's all over the news, it's all over newspapers, this thing and that thing. It's you don't have to go to these websites to know know they exist. Like you know, you know, a phone in two seconds you you're somewhere else. Why not go to why not go and encounter the beating heart of our Lord in the tabernacle? You know, beautiful, beautiful, it, and and it's not easy, but it's beautiful. Um, it's, and it's a beautiful pilgrimage. Uh, that's my my view. Some somebody else might correct me, but um, that's how I've experienced the Eucharist. You know, God giving me His heart and say, "This is the heart I'm giving you. I'm going to push it in your body." God putting His heart literally in our body. You know. And actually, when you start meditating on this and then reading the gospel, you, you kind of say, oh, I can understand a lot more things that I didn't understand before. I can understand. Uh, I understand a lot. You know, it's you can go a whole life not understanding these things. But when you understand that God is giving his heart in the Eucharist to actually physically place it in your body to be in the most intimate place, which some these people on those websites and those only fan websites will never be able to give you they'll never they don't care about you they could not care less about you but god in his great mercy christ is coming with that eucharist to transform your soul and it's it's a and i give this as a challenge to people if if, if you know, challenge yourself try it try it receive communion kneeling on the tongue Close your eyes. You don't, you know, the, you don't have to say amen in the traditional form because the priest is saying. Our, saying amen doesn't mean that the Eucharist is any real or less real. If you're, if you're well catechized going to Mass, you should understand that the presence of the Eucharist is what it is. You are, we don't have to agree. We just have to live in a state of grace. And this is why, you know, traditional Catholics, you need to be a bit more catechized because the priest is giving you the body of Christ. We don't need to say amen. I know in the new form they've added this in, but that, that ascent does not change the Eucharist. It's, our, it's the whole reception of the Eucharist. Kneeling, oh, I know who I'm receiving. Kneeling, I close my eyes, I open my mouth. And I receive the heart of God, the living, beating heart of Christ into my life, into my soul, into my being. And you, we have to clear out your heart, prepare, clear out your heart, clear it out, do the, do the housework, clear it out, make it clean, you know, direct your heart to God, at least in that moment. You know, direct your heart. Don't be lusting after other things in your life. And it will transform your life. That's my experience anyway. Um, and I'm no perfect person to talk about this. I just, I'm just talking about an experience. That's my experience of the Eucharist. You try it. You know, just, just, just try it sometime. Just try it. Clean out your life. Clean out. It's very liberating. It's very, the freedom you get from this. I, you're, you're, not, you're not stuck and in, 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 in your mind isn't thinking about, oh, when am I going to get my next this or my next that? You know, 
you really your heart is is captivated with something different i, I i'm that's just my you know i'm just a i'm just a sinner you know but i i do find it it has helped me it has it really really has helped my life um you know really really god captivates our hearts so try it um and do do get this book the bishop of the abandoned tabernacle um it was recommended really love this book and it's it's not too long it's 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 a very it's a what it's a it's a hundred and 126 pages it's it's just a beautiful book for meditation i mean you can just i i really i really i really advise and if you have any other books let me know anyway god bless um pray for me i'll 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 pray for you i'll be going to our lady of guadalupe this sunday so i'll, I'll be doing a, a long video on that so people if you've any if you if you want to know anything anything about the basilica you want me to talk about anything or film anything there let me know God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.